emphasizes the hand and heart as well as the mind. Green design uses tools of diverse cultures to aid ecological transition. Green art expresses the many voices in our environment. We collaborate with the art nature creates. We remember the wild and we listen. We use the arts to express a spiritual, respectful connection to the places we inhabit. We have all connected to place with art and spirit. A day at the beach involves sand castles, sand pictures, sand collecting, surfers and dolphins dancing upon the waves, the lost worlds of rock pools, beach combing from the gifts from the sea. We form a playful relationship with the nature of the beach. Green artists work with what the sea offers. More and more often this is our own junk returned. It's the sea trying perhaps to tell us something. Like the ghost nets, Angela Pozzi's washed ashore sculptures of marine life, such as this giant jellyfish, are made from plastic debris that endangers the oceans. After 10 years and 1,000 works of rake, stick and dancing across his drawings, Peter Donnelly has become a key tourist attraction for Christchurch. He dances with the gulls and the tides to create daily ephemeral work. Their transience makes them more, not less, powerful. Sand and wind, animals and plants have their own exhibitions in this seashore gallery. Crabs create doodle drawings for the imagination to decipher. Wave and wind collaborate to leave textured patterns and nature offers an abstract art in coloured sands. Sand itself is a glass artist, as Gary Greenberg shows in these magnifications of selected grains. Even when art is smaller than a grain of sand, its magic fires our imagination. Our souls expand beyond that which the eye discerns. We might not all recognise its spirit, but we do love a day at the beach. So how do we take this message home to the everyday? This is our place, Karura, a distant mountain, an outdoor stage, washing on the line, and our first artist in residence, Bev Hogg's Next Supper, welcoming us with the necessity of a cup of tea. How do we work in this place of living? There is, and always has been, art and craft in nature. The art of the non-human. Trees are artists. Silky oaks are basket weavers. Hoop pines start their lives as paper makers but become grumpier in old age. While other trees practice more abstract collaborations with lichens and mosses. Small animals practice the performance arts. Birds sing dawn operas. Frogs chorus in celebration of rain. Spiders weave art to catch dewdrops. And caterpillars dance their wondrous journeys across their own small countries. The human animals too create art in shaped collaboration with country. Clay, wood, weavings and words express the material's voice and their creation in its own performance. Annika does ceramics, Ross does fine furniture, while I obsess with words and Katerina explores movement and food as healing. Our many friends, Lindsay Pollock, Leah Barclay, Ayla Scanlon, Ros Brand, among others, showcase the best of the local and inspire from further afield. Musicians, soundscape artists and singers in afternoon and evening concerts offer a celebration both in and of the outdoors. Artists in residence live and work with, respond to the energies of this place. These are just two of the 30 or so artists who have stayed, well actually they're just the legs, of Joe Tito, mm -hmm. who is painting and writing about a stone every day for a year, and the beginnings of creativity in Roslyn Edgar's inspired patternings of land. There are many layerings of locale and many ways to view their partnerships. John Woolsey, in his workshop on our somewhat untended land, taught artists to, weed a, uh, to spend a day in love with one square metre of space, no matter how weedy, wild or wet. And when sitting still gets too much, we dance with the earth. Sushi Sawazle, Jan Baker Finch and a white-faced heron reflect each other's responses to the rhythms of this small piece of country. Humans and non-humans begin to produce art and music together. La 
large green tree frogs improvise with Dale and Peter Ricketts, cello and gamelan. Seventy international percussionists come to play with nature for the day. Without their usual instruments, they become immersed. Frogs, plants, bowls, chooks and percussionists all get in on the act. And the land says thanks. The land likes its regular human rituals of respect and ceremony. They draw upon long-term indigenous traditions in connecting and collaborating with nature. We celebrate with the full moon, setting the collective outdoor table with locally grown foods and the porcelain tea lights of Petra, my king. Karura Mountain teaches us a slow creativity. When we do art in collaboration with its local energies and flows, life becomes easy. When we reflect and respect nature's artists, life becomes play. When we collaborate with the non-human world, we honour the best in ourselves. Singing the land and returning its spirit, we aim for more than economic sustainability, we seek a cultural sustainability. If the land is creatively celebrated, the place fills with magic. Better than fairies at the bottom of the garden, bunyips happen. <laughs> The Kura Institute offers creative paths to collaborating with every place. We all have creative conversations with our more than human places, however small and every day, and thereby we might all change the relationships we have with the world. This, then, is the greening of the arts. <laughs>